Hi, I'm OZ Hall. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. This video is part two of a two-part series. The series picks up where my System 55 patching for absolute beginners video left off. The video builds on what we learned in part one, so it's important that you watch the part one video first. See a link above to that video if you have not watched it yet. In this video, we continue to patch the System 55 based on the example patches in the Behringer Quick Start Guide. As we examine these patches, I'll also point out some of the common patterns of patching that are on display. Learning these patterns will help you understand what's going on with other patches that you might encounter. These patterns view the patch at a higher level than just one patch cord after another. The patterns will also help you create your own patches. So let's get started with the next example. The next patch we want to look at is patch number four, expressive lead number two. It's pretty close to expressive lead number one, but it has two signal paths instead of just a single signal path. So let's take a look at the patch diagram. And the first thing we'll notice is the two outputs from the VCO mixer. One of the outputs is going to the 923 filters module. The other one is going through a standard path through the low pass filter into the VCA. And those two are going in parallel to the output mixer. So let's patch this up. First, I want to point out that we've moved our delayed vibrato from this VCA to this VCA because we're going to use that VCA. The second thing I want to point out is that my 923 filters module is down here. Normally it would be up here, but I moved it because of this filter coupler module that I added to my System 55. I've already repatched from sawtooth to pulse output over here on the first two VCOs. The third VCO we're not using. We're also not using the delayed vibrato, so I'm going to just switch that off. Now we're going to patch up that second output path. We're going to go into the high pass filter and then from there into the low pass filter. And from there, we're going in to the VCA directly and out of the VCA into the second input of the output mixer. Finally, we're going to redeploy this envelope generator to the second signal path. We've got no envelope generator for the filter and we'll be able to adjust that manually. Also, we're going to take the sine wave LFO and route that into the pulse width modulation because that's going to be a critical portion of the sound. So let's hear what that sounds like. We can lighten that up if we want to brighten it up. Kind of like that. And now let's listen to the first signal path. And we can set these two any way we want to. That's without pulse width modulation, with pulse width modulation, and let's switch these octaves, they should be the same. And that's expressive lead number two. The takeaways are number one, parallel signal paths which is doable with a modular system, not so much with a fixed path synthesizer. Another thing to notice is that these envelopes have been adjusted 
per the instructions written in the quick start guide for this patch. So that's expressive lead number two. The next patch we're going to look at is patch number three from the quick start guide, Mellow Organ. And let's look at that quick start guide and make a few observations about this patch. The first observation is that the VCO section is very like the expressive lead. The second observation is that we have three different components or elements being mixed for our output mixer. You'll notice that there are three VCAs in use and there are three envelope generators in use. And again, that reflects the fact that we have three elements to this sound, three layers stacked on top of one another to produce the final sound. So let's get started on the patching. First of all, recall that our delayed vibrato is set up here, and let's cut that off. We're going to take the oscillator bank one mix and put it into the fixed filter bank instead of the low pass filter. We're going to take the output from there and put it into our main VCA. And this again is the envelope for the main VCA. And that's going to be the first voice. There are a couple of other changes we need to make. I've already changed the waveform outputs to be triangle, square or pulse, and sine wave. And we've got those mixed here, of course. And we're going to match the octave on the three VCOs. Now that we've got the fixed filter bank patched in, we're going to reference the documentation in the quick start guide and look at the settings for the fixed filter bank. And I've already set these up per this table, so we won't spend any time on it. The other thing, though, that I want to point out is the envelopes, and it goes into some detail on the envelopes and how to set them up. We're basically setting up an organ envelope with immediate attack, immediate release, and a sustain that is all the way at the maximum. There's some other variations in here, but that's the high level view. So let's listen to what we've got. The second element is a tuned percussion sound on key press. So let's patch that up next. For bank two, which we're going to use for our second element, the percussive tuned element, we're going to use the same pitch. So we're going to come out of this oscillator control voltage mixer and go into the driver for bank two. We're going to take that frequency and patch it in to the link input and then we're going to take the sine wave output and patch that into the input of the filter and we're going to cut off the envelope input to the filter and we're going to use that for our element 2 envelope and finally we're going to take the output of the filter and go into the input of the VCA and we've got this second element as our second input to our output mixer. Per the quick start guide instructions I've set up the envelope to have immediate attack, immediate release. The sustain is all the way off and we've got the decay set at 500. So let's hear what that sounds like, just the percussive element. And now we'll add in the organ. The third element is the untuned percussive sound on the key press. This is derived from pink noise, so let's get that set up. So we're taking our pink noise output and we're plugging it into the high pass filter. We're taking the high pass filter output and plugging it into this last VCA and we're taking the output of the VCA and routing that into the third input of our output mixer. 
we're going to take the trigger and plug it into the S trigger in on the envelope and the output of the envelope to the control of our VCA. And we'll turn down these other elements and just listen to the noise element. By the way, all of the controls are at zero except for the decay, which is set to five or perhaps a little lower than that. So we get a little bit of a key click. Now let's bring in the main organ and the percussion and that's our mellow organ sound so the takeaways here are number one using the fixed filter bank if we don't have to have any kind of dynamic filtering going on Number two is that we've got three elements of the sound going to our output mixer. Finally, it's worth noting that on the third element, we're using the high pass filter to get rid of a lot of the low end material there so that we're just hearing the key click. If you want a more aggressive sound, you can add in some of the higher end in the fixed filter bank. And that's patch number three, Mellow Organ. So the last patch that we're going to look at is the harmonic sequence patch, patch number six. Before we look at the patch, let's take a quick look back at the expressive lead one, which is how this is set up. We've got our oscillator section going into the filter, amplifier, and getting mixed into the output. And we have envelope generators and we're driving it from the CM1A CV to MIDI converter which has given us both gate and the CV, the keyboard CV which is going into the oscillator mixer switcher. Now let's look at the harmonic sequencer patch. A couple of things. Number one, instead of having just a single oscillator bank, we're using both oscillator banks what we're going to do is move this output mixer over here so that we can have this mixer available for this oscillator bank. And I'm going to pause and replicate all the settings here over here. So now we have all of our standard wiring done for the frequency, the pulse width, and our outputs. Also, I've set up these outputs to be triangle, triangle, pulse, which is what the harmonic sequence patch calls for. I'm going to go ahead and do a spoiler here. This is going to go into the high pass filter, so I'm going to make that connection. And we're going to disengage the delayed vibrato and just leave those cables in place. So let's look back at the harmonic sequence layout. So we've got our two banks of oscillators set up and the oscillator mixer set up and we've connected to the high pass filter and the low pass filter and one of the big differences here is that we're going to take our gate out of the oscillator output from the sequencer. Similarly, we're going to take our control voltages from row 1 and row 2 and route those to the two banks. So let's pause and implement those changes. At this point, you can see that the sequencer CV outputs are going to the two oscillator control voltage mixers. And we're taking the oscillator output from the internal oscillator on the sequencer. We're plugging that into the 961 interface to convert it from a V trigger to an S trigger. And now when we play the sequence, you can hear the trigger. So we've got our oscillator bank one all set up. 
bank two all set up. Bank one is going through the low pass filter through the VCA and bank two is going through the high pass filter VCA and this is voice one VCA envelope voice two VCA envelope and we've got the filter envelope which is being shared by both filters let's listen to the sequence now There's one last control element to this patch, and that is a sine wave low frequency oscillator coming from the 921, and we're going to put that into the control voltages mixer and turn on channel 1, and it's going to control both the frequency of the high pass filter and the low pass filter, and as the control voltage ebbs and flows, this will get louder as this gets softer and vice versa. Let's listen. And that's harmonic sequence. We've patched all six of the example patches in the Behringer System 55 Quick Start Guide. Of course this is only a starting point. The possibilities are endless. I hope that the patterns we've uncovered will help you expand and refine your patching techniques. Thanks for watching to this point. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more in-depth synth programming techniques. Thanks.